فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to bless every one of us, to grant us goodness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our offspring, those to come up to the end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them and keep them steadfast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created humankind starting with Adam alayhi salam. From the time of Adam and Eve or Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam, what we need to realize is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had with each one of these great people, certain people around them who would assist them and who would forward the cause that Allah had planned for mankind. And on the other hand, there were also those who did exactly the opposite. If you look at Adam alayhi salam, from among his sons, there were those who promoted righteousness, even when the other sons and daughters may have said things that were not in conformity with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had dictated, declared and required from mankind. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one of the sons was very abusive with the other. So he says, I'm going to kill you. Now that is abuse. He is abusing his own brother. And what the brother did was he responded in a way that would please Allah. He says, he says, Oh my brother, if you are going to extend your hand to harm me, I am not going to extend my hand to harm you because I fear Allah who is the Lord of the worlds. This verse is so powerful. It goes to show that the one who is conscious of Allah and the one who is not conscious of Allah behave very differently. The one who's not conscious of Allah goes around threatening, making comments that are very hurtful and abusive. Whereas the other one would actually say, you know what? I fear Allah. If you're going to swear me, I'm not going to swear you back because I know that I am responsible and answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is lesson number one. Lesson number two, let's look at Nuh alayhi salam. He was a great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had people who assisted him, who helped him. And he also had others who laughed at him, mocked, scoffed at, and at the same time abused, whether it was verbally, mostly, and sometimes even physically. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. When Nuh alayhi salam saw his own son, he says, Oh my son, I fear perhaps that you will be from among those who have lost. You will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the son joined those who were laughing, mocking at, and scoffing at Nuh alayhi salam. Allah speaks about this in the Quran. And Allah says the losers were those who were trying to make a mockery of those whom we had chosen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Thereafter, you have all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one after the other. We don't have the time to go through their lives, but each one of them was faced with challenges. For them, it was an honor to face the challenge for the sake of Allah. The difference between those on the right path and those on the wrong path is those on the right path, they consider it an honor to stand up to defend Allah to defend his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to defend what is right to defend the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas those who are wrong are defending none other than themselves and their mischief 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And Allah knows very well that subhanallah, it is the plan of Allah that will ultimately succeed. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who allows temporary, seemingly victory for those who are mischievous, yet ultimate victory will, will come to those who are with Allah. They are known as the friends of Allah. They are known as those whose cause is the cause of Allah. It's not their own personal cause. We've always given an example that when we do good, we should know, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. Allah loves those who do good. So many places in the Quran, Allah says that. So we've always said, my brothers, when you do good to someone, do not do do it because you think that person deserves it. No, if that's the case, your level of Iman is very weak. You need to do it to that person because you know Allah loves those who do good. In that case, your goodness encompasses everyone. I should not do good to you because I think you deserve my good. No, if that's the case, it's a tit for tat relationship. You are cool with me. I'm even cooler with you. But that's not how it should be. When you are not good with me and I can still be good with you, I'm doing it not for you, for Allah. Then I'm the winner, subhanallah. But I will endure, I will have to bear patience. I will have to go through suffering because you may for a while think that perhaps I am being the weaker of the two, yet strength is actually shown when a person does something for the sake of Allah. You want to know who is strong, who is powerful, not incredible Hulk. He has too much anger. He has temper. That incredible Hulk that we used to know when we were young, subhanallah, he, any small thing happens, he immediately explodes. That's not strength. The hadith says, a strong man is the one who can control his temper. Subhanallah. You can control your temper. The hadith says you are strong. Not only are you strong, you will be called out on the day of judgment to say, you know that day, Subhanallah, you could have actually exploded. You had the energy. You could have done whatever you wished because you had the power, but you controlled yourself for the sake of Allah. We want to call you to reward you in front of everyone here for that great act of worship known as controlling your temper. May Allah grant that to us. My brothers and sisters, we move further. Let's look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also had those who supported him. He also there had those who were against him. Those who were against him were only against him because they felt they were losing something personally. It was never for the sake of Allah. Name them. Let's name some of them. Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraik, etc. Even those who later accepted Islam, they admit we were only fighting the Prophet ﷺ because we were worried about our wealth, our power, our authority, and what we might lose if we consider him the leader. Yet Allah had granted him that leadership. Some of them who accepted later on, they became known as radiyallahu an. An example of Khalid ibn al-Walid radiyallahu an. Abu Sufyan ibn Harb radiyallahu an. Yet they were enemies before. They admit that we were actually enemies for nothing, for no reason. We lost and you know what? The loss was never ever that of the Prophet peace be upon him. Look at the battle of Uhud. There was no decisive victor. But in actual fact, the believers were told that you know what? You can only have victory. It's called Ihd al husnayn being in a win-win situation. If you were martyred, you will still go to Jannah, you won. And if you were granted physical victory on the day, then you were the victors in the dunya as well. It's also a victory. So you are never ever a loser as a believer. When you do things for yourself, you can lose. When you do them for the sake of Allah, with Allah in mind, you can never lose. So this is why when we do good or we abstain from bad, we should primarily correct our intention. I'm doing this because Allah loves those who do good. In that case, whether you deserve it, you don't deserve it, you spit on my face, you don't, you abuse, you say whatever, I still know my reward is plugged in with Allah because I did it for Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were chosen by Allah. And this shows us that those who serve the deen are actually chosen by Allah. 
Yes, the effort we may make, but whether or not Allah grants it acceptance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like wealth and sustenance, Allah chooses whom He wants to give wealth to and sustenance to. You have a person who has a PhD, but they are struggling to get a job. And you have a dropout who fell out of grade 7 and he's a multimillionaire. It happens because it's Allah and Allah's plan. Allah wants to show you that you know what? Your education is not connected to your sustenance, but it is actually the mercy of Allah. You need to try. That T-R-Y is absolutely important because if you don't try and you don't use the capacity Allah gave you, then you have yourself to blame. But if you have tried your best, don't become depressed if Allah did not give you so much or didn't give you right now. Your door will open. As a believer, the doors will definitely open. We hope that it opens now in the dunya, now in this world. Sometimes Allah might not want it to open in this world. How many of us know of people who have earned a little bit of wealth and suddenly the first thousand they saw, they started walking one inch, two inch, five inches above on the earth, the rest, thinking that they were loftier. It affected their attitude. It affected their character. It affected the way they looked at people. So if Allah loves you and He knows that by giving you a few dollars, you're going to become arrogant, He will do you a favor by not giving it to you. Subhanallah. This is why I say the winners are those. The true winners are those whom Allah has blessed with lots of wealth, lots of authority, lots of knowledge, lots of everything. And still they are as humble as ever. The best from amongst us are those who know that Allah gave them but they don't let you actually feel it they will greet you as though you are their boss and they are working for you those are the best from amongst us the best from amongst us are those who are so humble when they know Allah gave me absolutely everything because what is left let me tell you when Allah gave you authority Allah gave you wealth Allah gave you looks Allah gave you subhanallah so many other things knowledge perhaps and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you leadership what's remaining what is remaining Two things are remaining. Those two things are the real test. Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluq. How close are you to Allah? Did those things make you closer to Allah? That's number one. Number two, how about the rest of the people who may not be having as much as you have? How do you treat them? That's called character and conduct. Those are the only two things that we are required to actually work on on earth. Did you know that? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked, tell me, Tell me, or the Sahaba say, tell us which are the two characteristics or the characteristics that would lead the bulk of those in paradise into paradise. He said, Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. Just these two things. If you are closer to Allah, the more Allah gave you, the closer you became to Him. Wow, well done, subhanallah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with so much and you became humble, wallahi, you're a winner. So that's the test. This is why I always tell my friends, my brothers, when Allah's given you, the only thing you now need to work on is your character. Work on your conduct. Be humble. Be very, very humble. Because that is the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing else. He's already given you. The dunya you got to for the akhirah, you need those two things. May Allah make it easy for us. So let's go back to the companions. These companions, can we become jealous of them? The answer is no. Allah chose them. Yes, we may say, Oh Allah, you did not choose us to make us companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but at least let us be his companions in the hereafter. Say Ameen. Amen. Yes, we want to be his companions in the hereafter. But Allah chose solid people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from among them such people that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once came onto the mimbar, the mimbar. And he's looking at his companions. And he says, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, wa Umar fil Jannah, wa Uthman fil Jannah, wa Ali fil Jannah, wa Talha fil Jannah, wa Zubair fil Jannah, wa Sa'ad fil Jannah, wa Sa'id fil Jannah, wa Abu Ubaidah fil Jannah. He mentioned ten of them. 
the names that I just mentioned now, one after the other, and they're just looking at him. Subhanallah, how happy do you think they became? <laughs> there was witness from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from the member telling them, you are from Jannah, you are from Jannah, you are from Jannah, you are from Jannah, you are from Jannah. Ten, one go, they are called Al-Ashara, the lucky ten, Al-Mubashirina bil Jannah, those who were granted glad tidings of paradise before they even died. Guess what happened to them? They became even more humble. They became even closer to Allah because they knew they got it. It's, it's there. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah grant us goodness. Now, how do we get Jannah? We get Jannah, yes, by doing what I already mentioned, but by acknowledging the favor of Allah upon those whom He has favored. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about those companions of his later on, you know what he says? Allah, Allah, fi ashabi la tatakhiduhum gharadam min ba'di. Faman ahabbahum, fabi hubbi ahabbahum, waman abghadahum, fabi bughdi abghadahum. He says, I warn you using the name of Allah regarding these companions of mine. After I leave, do not make them a target of your abuse and do not make them a target of insult, a target of something low and negative. Be careful. Whoever loves them, it's because of my love that they will be loved. And if you dislike them, then it is because underlying you actually dislike me. Subhanallah. Then he goes on to say, and whoever loves me, it's because of the love of Allah. And whoever doesn't like me, it's because of the dislike of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he actually says, Khairun nas qarni. The best of all the people, my generation. That's what he said. Khairun nas qarni. I'm sure we hear this a lot of the times in the Jumu'ah. Khairun nas qarni. Thumma alladhina lunahum. Thumma alladhina lunahum. Do you know what that means? It's the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, announcing to us that be careful what you think of my companions after I am gone. No matter what happens between them, no matter what type of arguments happen between them, we are all lower than even the worst from amongst them. Do you get what we are saying? Because he says, generation-wise, generation-wise, the best of people, my generation, then those that followed, then those that followed, and so on. You can imagine where we are standing. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. But the mercy of Allah is such that if you are trying to earn His mercy, you are trying to please Him, He will be pleased. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never said that it is difficult to please Him. In fact, He says it's very easy to please Him. You try. Promise. Become a better person. It's your secret between you and Allah. That's the beauty of Islam. Islam's beauty is that your connection with Allah is exactly that. Your connection with Allah. There is no third party involved. Subhanallah. Yes, we do ask for the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa being the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't render any act of worship to him. No. Nor do we go to the priest or the sheikh or the imam and say, please deliver me from evil. Forgive me. Because the sheikh or the imam could actually be in greater soup than you and I. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala message I have. Ta'ala grant us an understanding. So Allah says, your relation must be with me, but have hope. My brothers and sisters, the underlying message I have. In fact, it's not an underlying message. It's a clear cut message that I have today. Never allow anything that's happening around you to make you lose focus. Never allow anything that's happening around you to make you lose focus upon the mercy of Allah. Upon what? The mercy of Allah. If you have the mercy of Allah, He will give it to you. He definitely. Then you have Jannah, you have goodness. No matter what troubles you have on earth, show me the wealthiest of the lot. They have problems. They have issues because that's the, that's the plan of Allah in this world. This world, we say it's a test. We are the only ones who actually drive that message home. Life is a test because everything, every other day will be a challenge for us to rise up to. It has to be. No matter. You could be a person whom everyone looks up to and says, I wish I had that life. But you don't realize that if people knew exactly what you were going through behind closed doors and that you were wishing that you had their life. Subhanallah, this is what happens. So the winner is he who's content. Say, oh Allah, you've put challenges in my life. I'll take them in my stride. And inshallah, with your help, we will go through it. Whether it's a health matter, social matter, uh, 
perhaps economic problem as the bulk of us here in this country are going through at the moment. Challenges that sometimes do not make sense. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us. Never lose hope. Look at the companions. They were the best. I just mentioned names of people who were told you are from Jannah. Guess what? Some of them were murdered. Subhanallah. They were murdered at the end of their lives. Did that, sh did that actually show anything besides the pleasure of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does it mean, oh, uh, uh, you know, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was murdered, so now cancel the hadith of the Prophet. Astaghfirullah. This is why we say, don't allow your tongue ever to say one word against anyone of the chosen of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You lead your life and keep on leading your life. So if you don't understand something, say a good word and walk away or remain silent and walk away. But don't fall into the trap of saying a bad word because it is a debt that will definitely be paid back at some stage. Remember this. Don't say bad words. We have the example of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The Prophet says, لا تسبوا أصحابي فوالذي نفسي بيده لو أنفق أحدكم مثل أحد ذهب ما بلغ مد أحدهم ولا نصيفه Don't you dare say one single bad word about any one of my companions no matter who he is or she is because no matter what you spend in the cause of Allah even if it were a mountain the size of Uhud, worth of gold that you spent for the cause of Allah it's not equivalent to a handful or half a handful of that which they spent not at all they did it better than you more than you when it was definitely required they obeyed complete instruction may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to guard our tongues because the quran also says about all the messengers and all of those who scoffed at the people around the messengers allah says there came a time there came a time when whatever they were scoffing at and their laughter, their mocking, their abuse caught up with them and it resulted in their destruction. So why should I use my tongue to hurt people in a way that I'm going to pay for it? When I'm busy searching for the mercy of Allah, I'm searching for ease, but I want to make people's life difficult because of my tongue, because of abuse, because of false accusation, because of whatever else it may be. Let's not think that Allah is asleep. A'udhu Billah. Allah is alert, He's awake, He's watching, everything is recorded, He knows. And you know what? His justice is the best. My brothers and sisters, should we not have hope in the mercy of Allah? And should we not discipline ourselves a little bit when it comes to these issues we address today? A little bit of discipline will make a huge change. Let's learn to smile at one another. Let's learn to greet one another without any motive. It's not because you're a rich man, so I greet you. You're a powerful person, so I want to know you. The lowest from amongst us, let's go out to them. When I say the lowest, I'm talking of perhaps maybe financially, maybe... Uh, in, in, maybe they don't have authority, etc., etc. Perhaps the type of job they may be having, but not low in the eyes of Allah. No ways. Because you never know that person might be the highest in the eyes of Allah. But if you are prepared to go and greet and to make them feel important for a moment, you have won. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the winners. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.